Hey guys, Clumsy here and welcome back to ETS2. It's been a while since the last episode and uh, I've been missing the Pro Mods map and I've been missing this truck. So yes, we've uh, come back to this profile, switching back from the MANTGX-06 back to the DAF F241 by XBS and with the uh, trailer from Jazzy Cat, the Brosis trailer. And we have a job today that will take us from Barcelona to somewhere in France. But this will give us an opportunity to explore the rest of Barcelona. If you remembered from a previous episode, we took a job from Valencia, Valencia to Barcelona. But we weren't able to explore Barcelona in its uh, full glory, so we are going to try that now. Now the job I have is taking us to Stobart. But I think before we do that, we can maybe just do that kind of loop around just to explore the city a bit more. And I've heard that the, the optimizations are very good now compared to the, the, the initial release for Barcelona where it was a slideshow fest. Let's do that. And I did want to tr drive with this truck again because... Uh, I've been really missing the vintage feel. Maybe let's remove the parking brake. Where was that parking brake again? There we go, on that side. I've been really missing on this truck because I've been flying an X-plane with a very classic plane with lots of dials and stuff, the Cessna 172. I think it's one of the most famous planes out there, especially good for new pilots I think and uh, because of the dials because of the classic feel got me a bit into craving for a classic truck as well now the MANT JX06 that we've been driving with for a couple of uh, videos in the past few weeks it's amazing it has EVR sound so that's perfect but it's a bit too modern and I'm craving for that yeah that classic that vintage feel that poopy hanging accessory. <laughs> okay, maybe not that one, but fine. But yeah, I think this will be a nice uh, change of pace. Is that guy? Okay, let's give way for him. We'll be good citizens and follow the signages this time. If you watch the last silent trucking episode, it was a bit of a reckless driving, especially in the beginning. Because uh, this is not the exit, sorry. Because I forgot that I had to follow traffic rules. I think I've been flying too much offline. I kind of forgot that there are actually like yield signs and stuff that you need to follow when you're on the road. Look at that traffic. Is that traffic? No, that's actually parked cars, I think. Oh, that's traffic. That's traffic. Yeah. This place looks really detailed though, doesn't it? And the frame rate isn't bad at all. Not bad at all. I have uh, SIPS real traffic density enabled. So lots of AI cars. I have 300% uh, scaling if I remember correctly. And maxed out settings mostly. But still frame rate is not bad it's probably not 60 I hardly get 60 frames because of all, of all the mods I've been enabling but it's smooth enough for me I don't really count frames as long as it's smooth feeling enough for me it's good I do have some stutters though which I'm not sure which mod is coming from but I hopefully it's not going to be that bad moving forward so I'll do the same thing this episode share some updates, do some Q&A's afterwards, and then explore as we go. My goodness, that looks so good. Very detailed. And now with perfect frame rate. Amazing. Yeah. The Pro Mods team is really stepping up in terms of... I think they've got the quality down already. Very realistic looking maps. Along with the dirt and in the imperfections as well, 
but now they also have the optimization part going because of the their connections with SCS so some of their team I'm not sure if there's only one like Mandelsoft right is part of the promotes of the SCS of SCS now but I'm not sure I think there are also some other employees if I remember correctly uh, my bad there you go we didn't really give him too much trouble that guy Barcelona does like its roundabouts though doesn't it Yeah, this is a quite a fun route. Just chill. And there's enough traffic to keep you on your toes and uh, not be too lax. You have to really mind the intersections. Look at the signs. See if you have right of way and stuff. I think I have to move to the left lane here. It's actually perfect this job that we're taking because we are taking a job from Stobart in our skin. Yeah, might be perfect for that. Shift down a little, there you go. Now where the heck is that? I think this one. Please don't crash into me cars, thank you. There we go, okay, I took the right one. That is a very nice sunrise. Perfect time to start the job. But it's actually 9 a.m. already, so it's a bit late. But yeah, I think I have the February add-on enabled from foggy weather, so the the daylight times are a bit uh, late still left over from winter basically okay i kind of remember the trucker for hire episode that we had in barcelona with this setting very familiar feel this is nice i like it look how many cars there are there and still the frame rate isn't bad I like it. I wonder how they make that happen, huh? Some optimization magic in the background. It's all well and good. I was actually thinking today if I was going to record something from the other profile, the Grand Utopia profile, because I really love that map. I wanted a, I wanted to go back to pro mods today just for a change because we've been driving in Grand Utopia for quite a while so to mix things up although in the Grand Utopia news though I've been watching the thread and it looks like there is a new version coming very soon well sometime in this month March version 1.5 couple of new towns hopefully I'm not really sure about the details, but uh, my goodness, the, the mod author did say that there is something that I might like. There is a surprise for me. Who knows? There might be a clumsy town or a clumsy something. <laughs> a clumsy logo. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see it together though, but I definitely am looking forward to it. And for sure, I'll check it out as soon as it comes out. I'll keep you guys posted as well. This part of uh, Barcelona is very industrial, isn't it? Lots of trucks, lots of factories. We we belong here. We belong. Okay, and here it's 30, right? We're good here. Another roundabout. But I think the roundabout is under construction. If I look at the map, it seems like a half circle. Yeah, that's closed. Very nice, very varied. Goodness. The only problem here is uh, which 
angle to choose for the scenery. Yeah, Pro Mods never fails. The beauty with Pro Mods is even if it's not a high scaled map, I mean it's uh, it's the same scale as the default map, which is what one is to twenty one or something, something that along those lines. One is to twenty, so it's quite small scale. But with the number of countries you get, number of cities you get, I mean, you can go across the world. Whoa. And not feel like it's small at all. Can I squeeze in? Whoa, that car was totally invisible to me. Blindside hype. Okay. Good thing we didn't crash into him. Oh, red light. Dang it. These guys here are super strict. The moment it goes red, there is no uh, leeway. Is it this one? No, Stobart is on the right side, I think. Yeah, there you go. Our home. Okay, and I think I'm on the wrong side of the road, but fine. No one drives here anyway. Alright. And I, I will, if I remember correctly, we'll be taking something pretty, quite interesting. For the farming fans out there, you might like this one. Let's see. Should be here still. There we go. The Cron Big X 1000. I think that's a very famous uh, combine. Right. There. We park there and somehow they're going to load it in through those small openings. But let's let... Let's let them worry about that as long as uh, we're only taking care of the driving, not the loading. Let's let them worry about the loading. They'll find a way. Good. Now let me try to remember if I still know how to park. By the way, has Krishman released the DAF uh, this for this truck? The sounds? Because what I'm using from him is still the beta version. The one which only changes the interior but not yet the exterior. And I remember he was working on some stock sounds for this same truck. Because this one what we have is the open pipe. So I do want to try that out as well. Let's uh, align that properly here. Just a tad. Okay, don't hit the other guy. I think we are too much on the, that other side, but I think should be good. I think we can make it work somehow. Yeah, that should work. Let's let them worry about it. <laughs> okay, let's go for a coffee. A bagel, I don't know, what do you eat in Spain for breakfast? I have no clue. An omelette. Who knows? A paella. Paella. Maybe that's for lunch. There we go. Crone Big X. That is from Jazzy Cat's trailer, Brosses. The Brosses own trailer. And sorry if I pronounce that wrong, but you get the point, right? And now we. Turn on the beacons. Too bad the beacons on the combine itself doesn't open. But that doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> Alright. So there should be beacons as well at the back. Or at least a beacon. There we go. Perfect. Uh, it is quite heavy. 14 tons. Okay, that, not that bad. But it does look pretty cool. I'll take a photo later as we drive across a bridge or something. You know the drill. Okay, that will take us to, well, that will allow us to drive over on the coast. Can we drive over there? Is that possible? It's going to be a bit longer, but that might be more scenic. Yeah, let's go through there. And then it will uh, drive this all the way to Montpellier. Montpellier? Something like that, I guess. Okay, Barcelona. And uh, crossing over to some cities. Yeah, that sounds good. And I do want to make our way next to the UK. I haven't checked out London. London. In this uh, profile yet. The, the new London. 
<laughs> the new London in this profile I haven't checked out. So let's check that out and also the rest of the UK, especially Wales, where our friend Rex at home has his home. It's his home in terms of uh, in reality, maybe as well. Actually, I didn't, I didn't ask, but I guess so. He must be from Wales because he's been working mainly on the Wales area. That's my assumption. Oh, two low revs. I think this guy is going straight. Oh, he's giving way. Thank you. I think he had no choice anyway, or she. Is that a, a lady? All right. Off we go. Yeah, this truck is beautiful. I think this is my favorite vintage truck. Super classy looks. But doesn't feel uh, dilapidated. Just the right amount. Lots of cars here. Thank you. Even the... How do you say? Around about under the highway. I like that layout. Okay, let's squeeze in here. I think opposite side. Up, oh, up, 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 sorry. There you go. Good thing he didn't slam into me though. Okay, good. Okay, so what's been happening? What has been happening recently in the trucking world? Um, I think we go straight here, yes. In the trucking world, I have not been so updated. Very nice sounds, and I think I missed my turn. Dang it. Yeah, missed my turn. So that is now a 381 kilometer journey. Dang. Let's see where th that takes us. That's the problem with Barcelona. So many routes you can take. Okay, that's not that much of a problem. And I think we can take a photo there. If that's not a tunnel at least, what is that sign? Yeah, it still is mainly the same route, just quite a different way going there. What is this uh, thing all about? Where did that guy stop? I have no clue. Okay, maybe he's giving way for us. He's that nice a guy. There we go. And does it, is it? Am I on the wrong lane? I don't know. Let's see. It's not a broken line, but the GPS does say I go here, so I just follow it. Oh, this is looking so good. Getting on the highway finally. Able to stretch her legs and stuff. So, updates. Updates. Um, maybe a comment first before updates. I did get a comment from the silent trucking video. <laughs> a lot of. Uh, so, first. So, yeah, the, the, the latest silent trucking video, the one with the MANT GX06, it's a bit controversial at the moment. Lots of uh, down votes. Lots of haters. But to be clear, I think, and this is my theory, if this is still the case because it happened already before. Wait a minute, where are we going? I am not sure. I don't think there's any other road though. Okay, good. So the theory is that there are lots of haters from EVR because, uh, not really lots, there's one particular troll who hates EVR sounds mainly because he switched from freeware to payware and he hates it, hates EVR so much that he actually has like, I don't know, more than 10 accounts comments the same thing using his different accounts to flame, to troll uh, EVR whenever he posts something and EVR confirmed that he uh, confirmed that problem and that guy, that troll, and that troll is actually 
seeping over to my videos as well whenever I feature EVR sounds. So if you look at the EVR sounds, you'll see a couple of downvotes there, like more than 10, maybe 11 or 12. Most of that is coming from the same guy. I remember before when I first posted EVR sounds, EVR payware sounds, he was actually, wait a minute, where are we supposed to go here? Let me try and study this. I think this one. I have no clue now. I'll just follow this here. Oh my goodness. I go here. <laughs> Super confusing spaghetti junction. Yeah, okay, we, we chose the right one. He probably slowed down too much, but we chose the right one. And I think it's time to take a photo after we cross that overpass there. Because this one is going to be majestic. That one. So yes, there are, there's this hater that has like 10 accounts and he dislikes every video with EVR sounds and before he even like commented a lot of uh, very rude things so I had to ban him and to block his comments from the channel and uh, all of his accounts and you would know it's from the same guy because the grammar is the same, the, uh, the sentence construction is the same and uh, it's the same... Uh, trolley comment all at the same time so in, in a matter of minutes you'll get all the comments from his different accounts and so i had to block him and so he cannot be his comments cannot be seen anymore but um he can still dislike the video so if you look at the evr sounds i think most if not all of the evr sounds would have like 10 or more dislikes most of them are coming from the same guy my goodness look at this Spaghetti Junction at work with super heavy traffic at the back. Why not? Why not? And let me get a... Oh my goodness, yeah. A bird's eye view of this one. How about that, right? How about that? That really works for me. Okay. Okay. So yeah, don't worry about that. Don't worry about the dislikers. The important thing is you like it. And that's how we counteract the bad juju, the bad vibes. So if you see a lot of dislikes, but you like it, don't forget to hit the like button to uh, counteract the trolls, okay? And thank you for your constant support, because if you, if you were one of the guys who commented why there are a lot of dislikers, then that means you care, and I appreciate that. Thank you. So yeah, don't forget to hit the like button, especially on, well, on all the videos, <laughs> especially if you like them. So don't forget to hit the thumbs up, hit the like button here, okay? Alright, shift up. We are good to go. Ooh, what happened to this guy? Ouch. Okay, and now we slow down. Engine brake first though. Are we going there on the right? I don't think so, that's closed, okay. Good. One less choice to worry about in here. I think there is like a... Okay, there is no choice here for like an auto pass. So we we'll just have to slow down. Engine braking all the way. Haven't hit the brakes, haven't tapped the brakes yet except for now. Perfect. Wow, it's free. Zero euros. I'll take that, thank you. <laughs> Oh, there's no one there. Freaky. Okay. Good, 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 good. So yes, don't worry about the dislikers. Counteract them with the likes. And then... So there was one guy who commented. Thanks for the comment and the honesty, by the way. He said uh, that the silent trucking seems like something, like an excuse for me not to make commentary videos. So it's like a, an easy way out and he doesn't like it at all. Why would he watch silent trucking if he can drive himself? And that's all well and good, that's a fair point. It, it is easier for me to make silent trucking videos, that's true. 
so sometimes I do make them for convenience but more so I make them because some people actually like the silent tracking videos more yeah they don't like my voice or they yeah they just want the the relaxing feel and it's not always that you want to drive sometimes you just want to watch and enjoy I mean honestly I watch my own videos sometimes mainly the silent trucking ones because if I just like I have like 10 minutes to spare 15 minutes to spare I just want a bit of a relaxing feel I load up the MAN TGX06 silent trucking video with uh, uh, driving over Grand Utopia that is so relaxing to me I love that so yeah love your own <laughs> but yes um, it's a uh, it's a situational thing and I truly respect that you don't if you don't like it but yeah just to uh, explain to everybody else goodness okay maybe that wasn't the one it should be this one <laughs> oh, Spain 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 never fail to surprise Look at the sky there from foggy weather. The mirror. Beautiful. OMG. Okay, is this a roundabout? It is a roundabout. Let's keep on the left. No one there. Thank you. Let's occupy both lanes just so they wouldn't... Uh... Oh, this guy! Oh, this guy doesn't know how to take a hint. Okay. Your fault. Okay. Okay, we're good. So now we're going through some very scenic routes. So yes, that's just to explain the silent trucking. The, the reason why there is silent trucking. There are actually a couple of folks here in the channel who like that better than the commentary one so please respect that as well and I, I uh, truly understand if you don't like it it might feel a bit too bland a bit too empty a bit too repetitive or however you see it and that's fine that's fine but yeah some people like that better all right what else I think that's it from other updates point of view, I don't really have a lot of updates in the trucking world. I don't think there are a lot of new things happening. Lots of things cooking, but not lots of things released yet. So we'll, let's wait for that, right? Let's wait for that. It will come surely. So we'll, now let's go and switch to the Q&A. We do have a lot of questions. Thank you for listing down questions, guys. And if you do have more questions, post them in the Discord server. There is a questions channel in there, just post them there. Or if you don't have access to Discord, you can simply comment here, tell me you have a question, and then I will include it in the list, okay? So now we proceed. We have uh, all these sets of questions from Jay still. Thanks a lot, Jay, for coming up with these. He asks, uh, how many phones have you broken or lost? So I am, I hope I don't jinx this, keep, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed to be safe. I have not been very unfortunate when it comes to phones. So I think in general I'm pretty, how do you say, I take care of them pretty well. Like I make sure I don't bang them, I don't uh, throw them down or I don't... Uh, charge them carelessly and make sure the cables are not tangled so they will be to, to like preserve the longevity things like that let's merge left here let me just take a look at the back here so that looks so good look at the skies Ooh, beautiful so yeah i'm not the most uh, reckless guy so usually the phones I have tend to last until they actually like you know run out of batteries like the batteries don't uh, have a healthy life anymore like they, like they run out super quick and they're not uh, viable so phones broken 
can't remember if I've broken any phones. Not that I know of. Uh, so yeah, usually it's the battery that it runs out. Lost any phone? I don't think I have either. I do remember one instance from my brother. So this is matter of luck, not a matter of recklessness or uh, yeah, but uh, or not really luck, but uh, misfortune. There was a time when my brother was inside a car, along with my dad, and he was uh, kind of held up. So someone had a gun and they were stuck in traffic so they were stopped on, on the road and uh, he was uh, using his phone I think this is, and he, this is a brand new phone that he got I think it, it was the Nokia days Nokia 6510 or something like that but it was a pretty cool phone and he was just sitting there using his phone texting there was no internet yet back then no mobile data yet back then and then these two guys from both sides of the car approached them um, they had these like guns um, not really the hardcore guns but something like old guns but still guns right and uh, they banged hard on the windshield or on the glass telling them to uh, give the phone to them and so rather than risk anything else they just gave the phones and that was a very like traumatic experience even if I was not the one personally involved, because it was my brother very close to me, I was I became very paranoid because of that experience, of their experience, and I am very cautious when that happens. So, like, whenever uh, it's dark, and when I want to use a phone, even nowadays, I try to keep my phone like at the bottom of the seat so that it won't show from the outside won't like shine from outside and then there will be like minimal uh, visibility so it will be less prone to that kind of uh, uh, misfortune so but, yeah it's 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 been a learning experience for us so uh, we're trying to oh this guy if we're going to go then go okay he won't okay i'll squeeze in then So yeah, that, that has taught me a little bit of uh, that along with the other experiences we've had. Has taught me a bit about the how to keep your things safe. So if you if you ask me now in general, not just about phones, but about my things whenever I go outside, I'm a pretty paranoid guy. Like I, I never want to leave my bag on the on the seat, on the table. I always want it on my lap where uh, the, the strap is around me whenever I'm eating, whenever I'm uh, sitting down I always have it within my reach and within, within in contact with my skin so I, f I can feel it and uh, I don't like if I go, need to go to the, the bathroom or the, yeah, the comfort room I... Oh, we're crossing over to France. This is very nice looking. This is pretty cool. Goodness. Can I, could I have gone through there? That was a very interesting stop. Looks like something for trucks. It's not being used anymore though. Maybe it's most, mostly for resting nowadays. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so that taught me to be paranoid with my things. And in a way that's good. Just the right level of paranoia, I guess, is, is healthy. Because um, in Manila, especially, you cannot afford to be to be lax with your things. You really have to pay attention because a lot of there are a lot of uh, guys who will take advantage if you are too uh, lenient or too uh, oblivious of your things. Now, in Singapore, it's a completely different picture. In Singapore, uh, I don't think people lose their things, not as much at least, because uh, I've had uh, numerous occasions or stories from friends, even from Mrs. Clumsy, where they left something and uh, they are actually able to get it back, like even phones, bags, wallets, 
So they find it in the lost and found intact, not a dollar gone. Everything is intact and that's why people here, they are more relaxed. They are more confident that they are safe. So for example, in Starbucks or in other cafes, you would find people with their laptops, right? And they're working, they're surfing or something and they need to go to the bathroom. So they just leave their laptop there without a lock or anything. That's like the normal way how people here in Singapore behave. You will see that me personally, because I was, uh, I would say, how we would say, I was trained in a Manila environment. I would never leave my laptop like that. Even if I lose my seat, if I have to go to the bathroom, I will take my laptop with me and just worry about getting another seat later. As long as I'm sure my laptop won't get lost. So yeah, I have that level of paranoia. And I guess it depends where you grow up. Because I grew up in Manila, so I, I, I learned to be a bit more careful because I needed to be. If you maybe grew up in Singapore or in Japan or in some other very I don't know developed country, then it's like a more it's safer environment more or less, and you probably don't didn't need to be as uh, um, vigilant about your things. But yeah, that's probably why I haven't lost a phone yet. It's partly luck and it's partly training <laughs> from the environment. And hope I never do, but uh, yeah, fingers crossed. But thanks for the question, Jay. Very interesting. Wouldn't have thought of explaining that one before, but nice to nice to have that topic. Next question is, what is something that most people get wrong about you? Ah, this is very common. This is like. I'm not sure how it is, but yeah, I think even in other countries. So in the Philippines, where I'm from, basketball is the number one sport. Yeah? And most of the guys play basketball. I highlight most. I also highlight I'm not one of them. I am absolutely sucky at sports. I have like zero hand-eye coordination. So I really suck at catching balls, dribbling them, everything about them. I suck at sports, period. But then I physically, I am a very tall guy for a Filipino. For a guy in my country, I'm quite tall, above average height. And so whenever someone meets me for the first time, especially at work, in school before, they would always assume that I play basketball and that I'm good at it because I don't know there is this if you're tall in basketball I think it's a very good thing right um, and that's always the assumption but it's always wrong and I also had to explain myself that <laughs> no not me <laughs> don't me so I think some people yeah, have that impression that I'm good at sports, especially basketball, because of the height. But it's a total uh, wrong impression. What else? So aside from sports, being aside from the height factor, the basketball factor, what else? What is something that most people get wrong about you? I don't really know, because there's this version of how you see yourself, right? Like how you think people see you and how people really see you. From what I imagine of myself when I'm outside, I seem like a very uh, outgoing guy, you know? Maybe, but that's maybe that like expectation versus reality thing. Maybe the other people when they meet me, they're really like, oh, this is a very shy guy. <laughs> yeah, like I have this impression or I have this imagination of myself whenever I go out people would think of me like the the party guy no, not really the party guy I, I'm, I was never the witty one the, the comedy the life of the party it was never that but I think I've had my uh, fair share of extroversion you know being able to converse and interact with people and like just spend some nice time with them wait a minute okay middle for a sure middle because that right one is looping around. <clears throat> okay, good. So I have this imagination that people think of me as an extrovert, basically. 
and you guys know if you've watched any of the videos I'm a total opposite total introvert I need to charge up before I go on parties before I go out with my friends I need to charge up on some uh, extroversion and afterwards I need to uh, play some games read a book spend some time alone and things like that so that's probably something else but yeah as I mentioned that's more of uh, my perception on how people see me to be honest I think in reality they know immediately when they see me yeah this is a shy guy <laughs> this is a weird uh, introvert and I'm totally fine with that that's just who I am and I've grown to accept that okay this bus taking his time you, you okay perfectly red bus must be from sipping house real traffic density mode. actually all the cars are the number of cars depending on the time of day and the type of the road you're in that is from sipping house real traffic density also the sounds earlier there was like that sports car sound that was from his mode as well real traffic ai sounds something like that okay where are we going now i think right i think this is the right one hopefully yes i think so and then we are turning left somewhere so this road is curving to the left yes okay good Phew. not too bad so far okay number seven next question from him from jay what would you not do for one million dollars by the way if you are wondering i'm not sure who is um, like monitoring the questions here but if you feel like some questions have been skipped let me know but just take note that I did a Q&A on my latest explain video, the one in San Francisco. So if you look at the la at the, the end of the title, there's a Q&A there. So if you're looking for some other questions, it's there. I think I answered like just two questions there. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's a nice place to do Q&As as well. Because as we're cruising, you have some spare time to uh, chit chat. No? Okay. But yes, next Chase, next question. What would you not do for $1 million? What would I not do? That can be a very philosophical thing. It can be very deep. But I think Jay is more on the... the uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if I have a witty answer for that. But let me see. That, that's also one thing. I'm not a witty guy as much as I would like to be. I don't give out funny answers I just give answers honest answers at least that's the best I can hope for even though I wish I could come up with something witty something that would crack us up or something oh, probably not but yeah what would I not do for one million dollars mm. I... so I'm a guy who's very much in his comfort zone I guess you could say I hate going out of my comfort zone but for one million dollars I can stretch that quite a bit <laughs> I would not stretch that out too much so that uh, I become a totally different person though so let's say for sure I would not break my principles for a million dollars I would not go out of my way and turn my world upside down for a million dollars because I think I can earn not me maybe not that much but maybe eventually yeah through investing and stuff like that saving money bit by bit I can earn that eventually hopefully that's the that's the dream without uh, compromising myself so I don't think I will go too far to get it if it's something like extra effort learning something completely new changing jobs then that can that didn't work for me but uh, only to a point so i wouldn't do anything illegal for it i wouldn't do something that i really hated i wouldn't trade i don't know 
portrayed something that is important to me for it, so I wouldn't put it as a priority, is what I'm saying. For me, right now, the priority is doing what I want to do. And the money is secondary. So as long as I have enough money, even if I'm not super rich, that's more than enough for me. So, yeah, I wouldn't bend over backwards for a million dollars, let's say. Because money is only, like, the means to do the things you like, right? And if you can do the things you like anyway, you don't need that much money. If the money you have currently is enough to do the things you love, then that's a win in my books. So, how much money is enough? I guess that's... That depends. Feels like France now, definitely. The roads are from there. Are we close? We are close. Okay, cool. Next question. What do you think you know a lot about, but probably don't? What do you think you know a lot about, but probably don't? Hmm. There is this thing, right? The, the more you know, the more you know you don't know. I think in most in life, in most cases in life, I think I'm at that point. Because there's this... Uh, I think there are phases, there are stages to knowledge. The first is being blissfully ignorant. The next is being... So that, that's like knowing nothing about something. The next is knowing just a little. Just a little, and it's little enough to be dangerous. Little enough to give you confidence. False confidence. That you say, okay, I know, I know this topic already. And then you say, I know enough about it. And you're confident that you know enough. Which is most likely not the case. Because at that stage, you have a... You know enough just to know something about the topic. And sometimes you feel like that's everything to know about the topic. And then after a while, you start learning. You start realizing, oh crap, it's not really everything. There's so much to learn from this. There's so much more. And uh, from there... Ooh, dirt road. I... So from there... This is actually pretty nice. This looks pretty real. And uh, that we're delivering a harvester here. It's pretty accurate. Someone delivered a new harvester and we're delivering it to him. Farming same height. So... I'm probably at that stage in most of the things that I like about. I would not be confident enough to say I know like uh, a lot about them. I, I probably know a lot but I don't know everything and I don't know enough about them. Especially with the things I'm pursuing here in YouTube, like in the trucking, in the planes, in trains. You know, these things I learn about as we go, as I learn from you guys, as I read, as I watch. And I think I know enough, just enough, to know that I don't know enough at all, if that makes any sense. So I've, I've reached that stage where I know that I need to learn so much more, and I'm not... Uh, I don't have any false impressions that I'm an expert in any of these. Yeah? So probably where you could say I'm pretty confident about is <laughs> even in financials, no I wouldn't do that because I'm like I read about personal finance, I try to learn as much about them, but I don't think I'm an expert at all and I'm such a noob in other things. So even in that aspect, no. Maybe in my job, that could work. Yeah, because I have a very specialized job. So much so that I think it's quite hard for me to find a different job. Because it's highly specialized, highly specific to the client I have. The same one I've had for the past 11 years. And I think if I switch to another company, it would require a lot of adjustment and uh, not everything will be applicable, you know, things like that. So yes, I think if, if anything, it's about the specific role in my company. 
I would say I would know pretty much not everything but a lot I know enough about it to to be an authority in that topic but yes I, I think in general I'm not a very confident person I feel like if I don't know enough then I shouldn't be making it apparent that I'm confident or that I know enough you know fake it till you make it I don't like that phrase really although it's essential at times I don't really like doing that and it can be very different with different cultures like if I compare and this is a this might be a stereotype but this is a, from what I've experienced in my in my career throughout the years this is how it is mostly with people like if you compare Filipinos versus Indians our personalities are very opposite to each other Filipinos are very how do you say Filipinos don't have that confident vibe you know so even if we know things sometimes it would appear like we don't know enough so we are at that more of uh, that side of the spectrum Indians on the other hand I think they, they are trained and correct me if I'm wrong here but I think Indians are trained to be confident they have very good self-confidence and so with Filipinos it's possible that you know something but you don't share it enough or you don't give a vibe that you know it which is bad and from the other end the Indians can be like the opposite where you they might not know something but because of that amazing self-confidence that they have they can appear like they know everything yeah, so there is that 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 uh, certain level of difference and so when I'm working with these people I tend to adjust for it so like with Indians do you really know with, with Filipinos do you really not know and also the opposite is applied it's not to say that Filipinos or Indians are better but they are very different in their way of upbringing and uh, different cultures different uh, points of view and that's what's amazing the diversity you know working with different people you get to know a lot you get to realize a lot of things difference in cultures difference in education difference in styles come on why will this not work there we go thank you so yeah i hope i didn't offend anyone there but uh, that is based on my personal experience what i've observed throughout the years and that is a bit consistent with what i've been um, sharing with my colleagues that is the common um how do you say common behavior common uh, feedback that uh, Filipinos are lacking in self-confidence most of the time and Indians are overflowing with them so maybe if it's possible we can share <laughs> and it will lead to a, a better uh, outcome all in all okay let's uh, 34 kilometers huh that's a bit far but I think I can spare a few more minutes I do want to drive a bit more I missed driving we can fuel up because I realized yeah that's quite low actually I think that's close to turning red the fuel tank if you see the rightmost dial the left part of the rightmost dial close to empty so yeah I've, I've worked with a lot of Indians who are very confident and uh, some of them really know their stuff you know they're amazing they're like wow this guy is like like a, a math wizard or a, a wizard and some are like <clears throat> the complete opposite like they know nothing but they both give off that same level of confidence so you really have to like filter it through and in the same way the Filipinos have like uh, the same the same thing that you feel like okay if you talk to two people both of them seems like seem like they don't know anything but one of them will just finish the project immediately finish the the, the task and one of them will really be clueless <laughs> so it's quite 
really have to adjust for these things and it's uh, it's quite interesting quite interesting oh look at that snow oh yeah that's with the february uh, add-on you get snow look at that that is amazing yeah that's from foggy weather you guys so you get the physics adjustments but now it's snow as well super cool oh that is looking so great that looks so real doesn't it with the snow getting wiped like that and even the the look how, how that looks being wiped accurately by those blades and the snow piling up on the left here and then falling bit by bit that is so good I've only, that's the first time I've seen that thanks a lot Kirill for adding that in makes that perfect right before we end winter and that's been added for a couple of weeks now I think but I just saw that now Okay, good. But yeah, that's uh, that's uh, the stereotype, you know. And of course, not everyone fits into that stereotype. But that is the what do you say? General pattern. And me personally, being a Filipino, I I'm, I can admit I'm more on that side. I'm not the confident type of guy. I would only feel confident about something if I like. I know I really know it and it's uh, sometimes it's it's not enough you know that uh, sorry I'm keep getting confused about this because it looks so good how those particles just build up that is so good looking so yeah sometimes I feel like I should be confident enough already but I don't have uh, enough uh, belief in myself so I still need to work on that and you guys probably noticed that like with with some of the videos like i've learned so much already in some topics but you probably feel like i still ask around so much i rely on you as the experts even though sometimes i should know enough already so yeah that's that's a that's my like my common my common um, how to say my generic pattern so i have to really learn and improve myself on that that's cool that's like part of my personality and that's just something i have to work with so everybody we're we're always still like work in progress right beautiful flares lens flares on the brakes the lights everything that is also from foggy weather and for those who are still wondering about the release of Foggy Weather, because it's still in closed beta, it's not available for download, Kirill says it will be released uh, when DirectX 11 is implemented for ATS2. A month after, more or less, then Foggy Weather will be released. Because he has a lot of plans, he wants to do so many things, and many of those things are only feasible or technically feasible when DirectX 11 is implemented so we'll have to wait for that let's maybe strengthen the wipers see more of those particles the last embers of snow ember of snow those two words probably don't match so much but I'll take it Anyway, thanks a lot for the question, Jay. And if you guys have any comments about what I said, if you disagree, if you agree, let me know in the comment section, right? I'm happy to have discussions and debates, but let's keep it civil. No cuss words, no curses, no violent behaviors, just constructive feedback and healthy, informative debates so I'm looking forward to that one uh -huh. can we do one more question probably okay what is uh, society doing now that in 20 years will be laughed at well, yeah this is quite interesting if you watch like a, a video or a movie from 20 years ago they do so many things that are laughable now Right? 
Now, I cannot really think about an exact example. Let me let me try. Mm, maybe at the very least, the, the phones. Like, if you see the the size of the phones they had before, twenty years ago, what was that? 2009, 1999. They probably had mobile phones already before, but they were the size of your shoe or even bigger. And if you look at that from 20 years ago, it's just like, what the heck are those guys bringing about? So are so humongously large that it doesn't make sense. But back then, it was the high-tech thing, the in thing. Is that a new ad? It's pretty cool. I wonder if it's real though. Maybe. I'm not sure if that's from the real advertisements mod. I haven't seen that before. It's probably a European ad, which makes sense. Um, but today and then 20 years from now, hmm, 20 years, maybe what I would think of is, and this is just a guess of course, but I would think of monitors as being uh, like old school, you know, how we have all these 4K monitors and uh, have all these cool um, big, large, humongous and high refresh rate monitors but who knows maybe in 20 years monitors will be a thing of the past everything will be in VR because VR is really stepping up VR is really like next gen nowadays it's uh, growing more and more mainstream not quite yet not quite there yet but in 20 years I wouldn't be surprised if it was and so you probably would need monitors I don't know for servers or something but for gaming I would think VR would be the the level, the normal, the mainstream thing. And you would think you would look at old, like uh, old movies, old shows, and see, wow, they still had monitors back then. I mean, if you look at the what was it, the Fast and Furious episode, the fast, the first Fast and Furious movie. And if you look at the things that they were stealing back then, they were stealing these humongous TVs, not even flat screen TVs yet. My goodness, it looks so old. I think that is how it will look like 20 years from now. <laughs> so <laughs> we will see, you will see. Come back in, a, in 20 years to this comment, if YouTube is still around to this video and comment what uh, you're able to find out. <laughs> anyway, let's leave it there guys. Thank you for the questions, Jay. Very interesting very nice discussion points thank you for watching everybody hope you enjoyed this one if you did please don't forget hit the thumbs up hit the like button comment share with your friends and all that stuff really love driving today really missed it thank you for watching have a nice day and catch you in the next episode clumsy trucking everybody and bye bye i was thinking i was if i was going to toot but not anymore because it might deafen you thanks and bye bye